Welcome back to this channel for Practice Problems for Actuarial Exams. My name is Krzysztof Ostaszewski. You can find information about me at smarturl.it forward slash Jedi. My advice on how to pass actuarial exams is at smarturl.it forward slash pass. This video channel is at smarturl.it forward slash pass actuarial exams. Here you have information about online seminars and study manuals for exams PFM, IFM, and LTAM that I offer. I direct the actuarial program at Illinois State University. You can find information about it at smarturl.it forward slash actuary. If you would like to offer a tax deductible, at least to the extent allowed by law, donation to support our students, please go to smarturl.it forward slash help ISU actuary. Here's a problem for today. For exam LTAM number 17 from multiple choice section of the last exam LTAM from spring 2019. For a fully continuous whole life insurance of 100,000, issued to life age 55, you are given the premium rate is 1,500 per year. There are no expenses. Mortality follows the standard ultimate life table, which you can find at smarturl.it forward slash SULT. Deaths are uniformly distributed between integer ages. Interest rate is 5%, so always remember that's the interest rate used for calculation of actuarial present values in the standard ultimate life table. And you always want to check for consistency, because if a different interest rate is used, you can't use the actual present value from the table, but you can use the um, data about the population size, mortality, and so on. Calculate the standard deviation of L5, the present value of future loss random variable at time 5. So for this policy, the force of interest is um, delta, which is the natural logarithm of 1 plus i, so natural logarithm of 1.05. And L5 is equal to 100,000 times the present uh, value factor for a death at uh, T60 years in the future, minus 1500 A bar angle T60 because that's how long the premium is paid, continuous mode in either case. Mm. So for benefit and for premium. And that's the same as 100,000 times 1.05 to minus T60, uh, minus 1500 times 1 minus 1.05 to minus T60 over delta, which is the natural logarithm of 1.05. So this is the standard formula, uh, 1 minus v to the t over delta for a continuous annu annuity. Um, and then we can rewrite this as 100,000 plus 1,500 over ln of 1 1.05 times 1 1.05 to a negative, to a minus t60. It's not necessarily, uh, well, it, the minus sign stands for the opposite here. It doesn't indicate a negative necessarily in front of a variable that it means an, the opposite. Anyway, minus 1500 over ln of 1 1.05. We're looking for the variance of this expression. So only the first random part affects the variance. The second term is a constant. We can disregard it for the variance calculation. Actually, we're looking for a standard deviation, but we'll calculate the variance based on this, and then we'll figure out the standard deviation as the square root of it. So here's the variance. It's the variance of that first expression. And that's um, the constant, 100,000 100, plus um, 1,500 over one uh, natural logarithm of 1.05 squared times the variance of 1.05 to the minus t60. But uh, of course, the second part is the variance of life insurance issued at age 60. Uh, so that's 2 a bar 60 minus a bar 60 squared. And we can look up those values in uh, the uh, uh, in the table, except we don't have the continuous life insurance in the table, but we have um, the uniform distribution of deaths assumption. And so um, the 2a bar 60 is calculated uh, from a60 using the UDD assumption and um, under the assumption of twice the force of mortality, so 2 times ln of 1.05. So the top is the mm, effective interest rate over, two, um, 
over a year with twice the force of mortality. So this is just I over delta, but I is replaced by the interest rate corresponding to twice the force of mortality, and delta is replaced by two delta. So the standard formula is I over delta times um, a60 is a bar 60 under UDD, under Uniform Distribution of Deaths Assumption. And we write that standard formula for the second term, and then we square it, and then we plug in the numbers that we have from the table for 2A60, which is 0 0.10834, and for A60, which is 0 0.29028, and then we do the calculation, we get 432,630, I'm sorry, 432,630,943, and the square root of that, which is approximately 20,799.782 is the standard deviation, and that's answer E. Please remember this is copyrighted material. The problem itself comes from a society of actuaries and belongs to a society of actuaries. The solution is mine. Good luck in your studies and good luck on the test.